Ooh, we are getting into a spicy video today. And I've got an amazing giveaway for you lovelies too, so stick around. Do you want to know my earliest memory of strut shaming a movie character? Oliver the musical, Nancy. Yeah, Nancy, the victim. I thought that she flirted too much and she wore red, which we all know is a bad colour, so she deserved what she got. <sighs> oh my god, I must have been like seven at the time, but why was I so resolute in this feeling that she was the bad one? Why was I so willing to blame a victim and not Bill? We've been taught through movies for generations that the popular mean girls are all struts. We have Monica Lewinsky portrayed as a disgusting homewrecker as opposed to like a victim of presidential power and workplace harassment. We even have Taylor Swift being called a strut because she has too many boyfriends. We've had parental figures policing clothing since infancy to not show too much skin, whether that's skirts, shorts, a dress, jeans, a t-shirt, basically anything, and especially if you've got a curvy body, and even more so if you develop early, and well, good luck if you're BIPOC as well because you get adultified from basically birth. We've been told that only stupid girls like stereotypically feminine things or are interested in relationships and they'll all end up pregnant and in hell. They're trash. We've also been taught through parental gossip about the bad people around us, whether that's our own friends that we're meant to ostracize or their friends that they're talking about behind their backs. We've been shamed publicly for our school uniforms not being quote appropriate and distracting the boys and teachers are uh, gross and that's happened since primary school. We've been taught since childhood that our bodies are bad and causes of sinful lust and we must police ourselves and be afraid of everyone because even if others falter, it's our fault for existing in the world. We must have done something. We must have been asking for it. And if you grew up religious, most of you had this pressure amplified, which created a deep-seated sense of fear and guilt in you, which you either still carry with you today, or it has taken so much work to try and unlearn. As you can see, the shame that women especially feel about our bodies has been created, making us not only scared of ourselves, but of others, and of any sexual feelings that we may have. Just do not. Therefore, we don't know what we like or what we don't like, and we don't know where our own boundaries lie. And all of this is why I was so excited when Belessa reached out to sponsor this video. We're giving away free gift cards to everyone who signs up for my giveaway. And their packaging is incredibly discreet, so nobody will know what good is await you. They're a bi woman company who are all about empowering all genders through their sexual wellness. They kindly sent me some toys, which I've been thoroughly enjoying. All of these are waterproof, rechargeable, made from premium quality silicone and come in these incredibly discreet charging cases. One for Thump, my personal favorite, even looks like a sunglasses case. Pebble is perfect for anyone who's a beginner to toys. The suction and vibration both work independently so you can find what works best for you. It's ergonomically designed and is very discreet with no annoying pattern modes to have to skip through. Now Thump, as I mentioned, is my personal favourite. It's like the Swiss army knife of toys. It does everything. It vibrates, suctions and thumps, and the true feel vibrations combined with the suction at its targeted base? Genius. So check out my giveaway link in the description box or the pinned comment down below to start discovering what you actually like. Everyone will receive either a free toy or a gift card. All you need to do is enter your email address and then check your inbox and you can see what surprise awaits you. And they ship all over the world so nobody has to miss out. Thanks again to Belessa for sponsoring this video so we can talk about these taboo topics and remove the shame from them. Cece and I have met so many boys and they are all so dumb. <laughs> yeah, and I have met more than her. So. Yeah, and Cece has met more than me because she is nicer than me. Nicer. I just mean you bet because you're well traveled. Well traveled is I mean, how we're gonna say it. You travel, tread lightly. I we will. travel a lot. Mm-hmm. I know you are, but what am I? Let's look at these survey results. Thank you again to all of the people that participated in my survey. There were 587 of you and you were so vulnerable about a really confronting topic and I really do appreciate it. If you ever do want to participate in my surveys, I always post them in my community tab. So make sure that you're subscribed and also turn on that bell notification so YouTube maybe will possibly let you kind of know what work I'm actually up to. And also follow me on Instagram because I share the link in my stories very often. I don't post very much on there, but in my stories, I'm always very active and very opinionated. <laughs> the euphemism strut was actually picked through my Instagram stories, so that's another reason why you should follow me there, so you can be actively involved in these videos. Now, this is a heavier video, but don't worry, I'm not getting into anything graphic, and it will hopefully style like a fire in your belly to make some positive change, which I'm always convinced that we can do together. And that will be, of course, resources in the description box for you down below if you need them. Let's define what strut shaming is so we're all on the same page, and this is from a scientific paper, so we can believe it. Strut shaming is defined as a stigmatization of an individual based on their appearance, sexual availability, 
infertility and actual or perceived sexual behavior and is primarily aimed at women and girls. This stigmatization is reflected in social and relational sanctions such as rumors, ostracism, or insults such as strut. Let's quickly look at the demographics from the survey. Geographically, about 50% of respondents are from the USA, followed by the UK, Canada, Australia, and Germany being the other big categories, followed by Finland, France, India, Poland, and Aotearoa all being smaller. And then most of the other countries are more Western leaning, but we do have some countries in Africa and also some Asian countries too. Now, regarding the age of the participants, majority are between the ages of 19 to 29, then 30 to 34, 13 to 18, and a smaller range is over 35 years. So that's definitely a younger skew here, and I feel a bit like an auntie because I'm 34 and most of you are younger than me. <laughs> you girls keep me young. Ugh, I love you so much. Now, I didn't ask about people's gender or sexuality, but a lot of you did volunteer the information. We had a handful of straight men participate, and there were a number of people who were trans and non-binary lovelies, um, but most of the participants are women of varying sexualities. So, have you ever been called a strut? 2.9% yes online, 10.9% yes in person, 10.9% been called one behind my back, 23.5% unsure, 20.6% no, 5.3% online and in person, 25.9% in person and behind my back. I'm sure I made a number of you feel a bit uneasy about selecting unsure because you're like, oh, what about those frenemies? Oh, what about that guy I turned down? Because, you know, strut is definitely a word which just gets hurled at women as like a generic insult because it's one of the best ways to get at us as we are unpacking throughout this whole video. <laughs> as we can see though, a majority of people have been called a strut. The more honest question, have you ever called someone a strut? 2% yes online, 5.8% yes in person, 20.6% behind someone's back, 9.4% yes about a public figure or celebrity, 46.7% no, 2% yes online and behind someone's back, 2.9% yes online in person and behind someone's back, 10.6% yes online in person behind someone's back and about a celebrity. Okay, look at how many of you haven't. Like, I can guarantee if this survey had come out when I was a teenager, that number would be below 10%, okay? This fills me with so much like hope. It's like rainbows and sunshine are just all over the place now. It's wonderful to see. Now, you may think less of me. I mean, I'm sure a number of you don't think much of me anyway, but I fall into the worst category, all of the above, and we'll be unpacking all of the reasons as to why. <laughs> Insecurity and growing up around strut shaming is a beast, I'll tell you that much. I think Hester Prynne was, excuse my language, a skank. A skank? Mm -hmm. So you don't think she was a victim at all? Why should I? She brought it on herself. Perhaps you should embroider a red A on your wardrobe, you abominable tramp. I'll make an example out of you. What are the earliest examples of strut shaming which you either witnessed or experienced yourself? At age 3 or 4, a family member commented how the way I danced to a song that was playing on the radio was improper. That was the youngest one. It is so young that it actually hurts to read that. But there were also others around the 4, 5, 6, and 7 age range who had experienced this, whether it's like seeing your parents shame other people, seeing your parents shame celebrities, or directly shaming you through the way that you dressed or through the way that you were acting or the way that you were sitting or just dancing or existing, basically. I remember my aunts talking about how men's brains were scientifically proven to view immodestly dressed women as objects rather than people, so immodest women shouldn't act surprised when they get mistreated. I was around six or seven at the time. <laughs> Training girls to view women as objects before they've even learnt their times tables fully? <laughs> Classic raising girls move, am I right? Strut shaming happens even if a girl or woman has never even kissed someone, let alone had sex with someone, and the thing is that the whole purpose of this is it casts doubt on a woman's purity, which is the main thing which she has to offer in life. We'll be getting to purity culture, don't worry. We all know that a woman's body is controlled by anyone other than herself, as the Supreme Court likes to remind us. By making everything the victim's fault, we're only endangering people further and stopping them from speaking out. And the thing is that most SA actually happens by men, so who are we really even protecting here? Yet it is us as women who police each other the most, saying it comes from a place of concern. Is it really concern for the woman though when you're actually just shaming and gossiping about her? Parents and controlling clothing is rife amongst all of your responses, but here's one that kind of perfectly sums things up. If I wore a shirt that was too low cut or pants that were too low waisted, my mum would make comments on how she didn't want me leaving the house. And when I accused her of victim blaming, she said she just doesn't trust other people. So that was probably junior high, age 11 to 13. And yes, I could tell that you were a millennial without even having to check your age because we all remember low waisted pants. Please do not bring them back. They are bad. They are terrible. I've made a three part series about the 2000s, okay? Don't bring it back. <laughs> well, maybe some of the clothes, but just not the mentality, okay? <laughs> 
When I was a little kid, I would hear my dad say often about celebrities or random people. He used the word strut, but also different terms, especially during dinner conversation. Because of that, I learned it as a funny insult because my family always laughed when he did this. And when I was around 14 or 15, he called me a strut a few times as well because I liked to wear short skirts. I also saw it in a TV show as a little kid. Doesn't this just exemplify how misogyny is played off as a joke? <laughs> ah, the suffering of women is so funny. <laughs> Uh, stop it, please. Seriously though, how many strut or hoe jokes have we heard across our lifetime and we've all laughed at them? I mean, look even at this example of bridesmaids. Have fun having a baby at your prom. You look like an old mop. You know what? You're not as popular as you think you are. I'm very popular. Oh, I'm sure you are. These were all lessons being taught to you, whether we realized it or not, like our little sponge brains were just absorbing everything around us and then we just internalize it and then say it to our friends at schoolyard, not realizing just how bad it actually is to do all that stuff and how many people we were really ostracizing. It really does create like terrible divides and kind of ruins girls' friendships, honestly, from a very young age, viewing each other as like a competition and worse as less than as trashy. I mean, ugh, I've talked about this sort of stuff in all of the lessons that we get taught in another video up here, which you should watch at the end of this. I'll have it linked at the end for you. How about that? Another common thread was grandmother's strut shaming all the time, whether you removed your cardigan in church because you were really, really hot, or just saying that your skirt was too short. This is generational training and it gets passed down from generation to generation, just like so many things do. <laughs> Except for housing, right? Uh, affordable housing? That would be nice. That hasn't been passed down. <laughs> Why? Another common thread was the color red. Just like with my example with Oliver and Nancy, the same thing was being projected onto you as children. Say like you were playing with makeup and like you put some lipstick on from your mum's collection or something. Oh, you're a strut now. Uh, you got red nails or something. Mm, strut. People are so quick to objectify their own daughters and they say that this is out of safety when the daughter is literally just playing with stuff, figuring things out, exploring and expressing themselves. School uniforms and what people wore to school came up all the time as well. The heavy policy of girls' bodies. People would be shamed by administration and teachers and even ostracizing each other and talking behind each other's backs because of what someone actually was wearing. Internalized misogyny is taught so young and is so pervasive across all of our cultural touchstones, really, when we actually break it down. But the thing is, I was so glad that so many of you have been on a similar journey to me and you've been unlearning it. Yes, whilst you may have a knee-jerk reaction to something, it's like, oh wait, why do I think that way? This whole journey is incredibly important. But there were still a number of people who were actually saying it was a really good thing to strut shame and how it was actually really positive and empowering to tell people that they were dressing too revealing. How is it empowering people to shame people and police what they wear? Sorry, what? There were some respondents that were saying that people who were expressing themselves in a more feminine way were just asking for attention and doing everything for men and they should get some self-worth. Like, oh my gosh, you want to have a boyfriend? You need some self-worth. We really need to work on this because that is not a very positive mindset to actually hold. It's, it's definitely smelling of internalized misogyny and um, something that I really do encourage you to try and unpack with a therapist, perhaps. And the thing is, it is so much worse for girls who develop early, say like eight, nine, ten, or something and you've got all of these people that are then strut shaming you and you get all of this attention from boys and green-eyed monster over here I definitely fell into that trap because there was a girl who I was incredibly jealous of because she had that she developed early okay and I was like oh that's why all of the boys like her instead of me being like oh the boys are actually being really gross by like just trying to make her run around the place because you know. Um, instead of me being like that, I was like, oh, she's just a strut. And if we're really honest with ourselves, a lot of it comes down to insecurity. That's definitely what happened for me. And it is something that came up for a lot of you as well, especially in that final question in the survey. The jealousy issue um, was a huge motivator for why people were doing this. And you know what? The scientific studies actually back this up as well. Um, but this also links into a video that I want to make in the future about being average looking and picking apart people's bodies and um, this sort of self-esteem issue. So this is something I do want to make in the future and I will be doing a survey for that. Let me know if you're keen for it as well because why put in all of the effort if you're not keen for that video? <laughs> Let's just look at that study, shall we? Strut shaming in adolescence, a violence against girls and its impact on their health. So the study was conducted in Belgium with 605 girls between the age of 10.25 and 18 took part in this study with the average age of 15.8 years. By socially sanctioning behaviours or attitudes that deviate from the established norm for romantic, sexual or gender performance, strut shaming reaffirms the dominant 
the codes of normative femininity, these representations make young people more vulnerable and less willing to react to this form of gender-based violence. Strut shaming has emerged as a predicator for depressive effects and health problems. The impact of strut shaming on the physiological and physical integrity of the young people who are the victims of it invites us to conceptualise it definitely as a form of violence that is likely to affect the development and well-being of adolescents. We recommend reconsidering the forms of prevention and support offered to girls online. These should no longer be based on perspectives of control, but rather on perspective of exchange and dialogue involving schools. There were so many parents, even from that survey, who were trying to like protect their kids by putting more protections in place, by policing what they wore, by policing what they looked at, by policing their lives, basically. And it didn't actually have any positive impacts on strut shaming. It just made things kind of worse, honestly. And there was definitely a link between um, SA and people that have actually grown up in like bad households, let's just say. I'll link the study for you down below, heavy reading, I'll warn you now, but it's definitely important. Controlling girls, policing what they wear, making them ashamed of their body, making them scared of their body, this has actually all had a negative impact on people. The shaming and fear and self-blame taught to girls in particular only makes them more vulnerable, more afraid of themselves, and especially with abstinence teaching being so popular in certain states in the USA. It makes girls not know what is normal to feel and what isn't, what boundaries they're comfortable with or not, and leaves them even more vulnerable to being taken advantage of, and sadly, they then have nowhere to turn if and when things go horribly badly, because they will end up getting the blame themselves. Self-blaming has been taught to them their whole lives, and that is a huge part of the problem when it comes to strut shaming. I hope for your sake that God has a sense of humor. Oh, I have 17 years worth of anecdotal proof he does. <laughs> you've made your bed. I just hope for your sake that you've cleaned the sheets. Did I just get saved? Purity culture is pervasive. It made me ashamed of how my body was changing through puberty. The priest at my church preached about how it was always the girl's fault if they caused a the man to stumble, aka SA them. So I'd never actually heard of the table gum metaphors and it just, oh, it's disgusting to me. You know the lock and key metaphor that like alpha bros like to use? This is that but 10 times worse in my opinion because it's so tactile and it creates such a visceral reaction. So the tape thing is similar to what happens in this video here, right? A boy gets called up to the front of class and he gets a piece of tape put on him because that signifies having sex with his girlfriend. Um, but you know, they're in high school so they break up, right? So then the girl gets pulled off the guy. Oh no, the stickiness of her is gone and ooh, look at that. She's covered in all of his like skin cells, his sweat, his hair, his smell, everything. Oh, and then another guy gets pulled up and then she sticks to him. But oh no, the stickiness is gone and then ooh, she gets even more of his filth attached to her. And it goes on, it goes on, um, literally turning a girl into an object, and it's always, always, the tape is a girl, always. It's revolting, and I hate it. It's the same thing as, like, the gum metaphor is, like, nobody wants a chewed up piece of gum. Um, Buddy the Elf would, just saying. Sorry, I need to add some levity to this, okay? This is a heavy video. <laughs> And all of this has a profound impact on people that grow up in purity culture. And sadly, that even goes for people that are victims of SA because you blame yourself, you feel guilty, you're like, I did something wrong to cause this to happen to me. Um, and that you were asking for it and you feel dirty and used and like, you should be ashamed of yourself, you're no good for a future partner, your future husband or whatever. <sighs> And it's no surprise that there is a strong correlation between purity culture and grape myth acceptance. Purity culture was related to increased endorsement of grape myths and increased likelihood of labeling marital grape and acquaintance grape as consensual. Intrinsic religiosity was also found to be a significant moderator of the relationship between purity culture and grape myth acceptance. Purity culture is so bad that some of you weren't even allowed to use tampons because that would mean that you weren't any longer a virgin. And I'm sorry, please, Anyone that has a period, just let them use what they want to use because it's hell actually dealing with a period, okay? Whatever products work for you are okay. Even if your parents were open-minded, the schools actually hammered home all of this purity culture BS and it just made it worse for you because you're like, okay, well, my parents think this, but then all of my friends are saying all of this about the other girls because they're taught through all of this stuff that's happening in society, right? Even for families who aren't religious or maybe they're even atheist, a number of you were actually saying that they still held on to these purity culture beliefs, but it was actually, um, you know, talked about in a different way. It was all about dressing appropriately and um, feeling shame about your body to make sure that other people weren't tempted by you. Only stupid girls like girly things. Only stupid girls are interested in boys and relationships or anything. So whilst it is, of course, omnipresent in religious contexts, doesn't mean that it's not everywhere else around us. We're friends. Good friends. 
Girlfriends, actually. Yes, we're girlfriends. We're in love. We're lovers. Lesbian, gay type lovers. But what if you're not cishet? What if you're non-binary? What if you're trans? The shame that so many of you felt, in particular after being raised religious, to try and even accept your own sexuality, Oh, that was a tough one and I really feel for all of you. It's created long-lasting impacts, like you don't know yourself as you can only view your bodies and sexuality as a bad thing. And there were interestingly a number of people who questioned if they were asexual because of this feeling. Now I want to restate here that asexuality is valid and it does indeed exist on a spectrum, but I found it so interesting how many of you were saying like how confusing it was for you growing up because you grew up around all of the shame culture and like having to fear this stuff, fear your body, fear sexuality, fear everything thing and then you're like I'm wondering if this is kind of why I'm like this because of growing up around that and the fact that you actually thought that other people were meant to feel the same way as you and then you realize oh not everyone feels this way like unpacking your own sexuality because of purity culture is so much harder <laughs> I grew up Mormon so yes the thought of any woman expressing themselves or being revealing was never accepted it made it difficult to realize that was aromantic and asexual sex repulsed as I thought everyone was like me not liking sex because I was raised as a girl. And what about biphobia? Well, strut shaming really rears its ugly head here. I was called a strut, prostitute, cheater, and a whore in seventh grade, age 12 to 13, for coming out as bisexual to my friends. I am so sorry that happened to you, that's horrible. I was raised in a religious household, Catholic. We were taught to be ashamed of our sexuality. I would get criticized for anything I wore even as a kid. I still have deep shame about sex and being bisexual. Having sexual relationships is hard because I can't get past the feeling that I should feel ashamed and shouldn't feel pleasure. From the studies I mentioned earlier, the harassment towards LGBTQIA plus folk was turned up 10 times because they were actually not normal. I'm using big quotation marks here right now. But this especially happened to people that were bisexual because, as the classic Carrie said, Is that a problem? He's a bisexual. What kind of question is that? Is oh. that a problem? Of course it's a problem. Honestly, sex in the city, in some ways we were kind of progressive, but in many ways not. I've talked about bi erasure before and I've brought up Verily Bitches videos before. I'll have their channel link for you down below so you can dive into this issue a lot more deeply. But it's absolutely something which people are still facing today, which makes me really disgusted with the world, actually. Anything that deviates from the quote norm is chastised and ostracised even more so, weaponizing these phrases as a way of control. And one thing I did notice from a lot of you who were talking about your sexuality was that it made it easier for you to unlearn purity culture faster because you saw through the BS as you came more into yourself. Well, she brought this upon herself. Kit. What? Blame and shame culture. One other thing that I noticed was people saying, well, none of this applies to me because I don't dress strutty. However, my friend, it doesn't matter what someone wears because they could be wearing anything. And you know what? How many of you were actually saying that you were wearing modest clothes, that you were wearing baggy clothes, that you were looking incredibly undesirable when uh, you actually had SA happen to you? How many times do I have to bring up exhibits like this? I'm gonna repeat it one more time. Clothing does not impact if someone's going to get essayed because the whole reason behind people actually doing in the essay to begin with is to have power and control over someone okay the clothes are not a temptation or anything no one's asking for it or whatever and this is messaging which gets taught to girls to allow guys to get away with doing terrible things and it's not always guys that are doing it okay i'm just going from statistics saying that it is mostly them okay no matter what someone wears they are never asking for grape okay okay like, you're separating yourself by saying I'm not part of that crowd of women, when actually this affects everyone, including you, even if you think you're exempt, even if you say that it's because you're not confident in yourself, because we've all internalized this messaging. I've been called a strut for stopping people from harassing my friends, as have a lot of you. You've been called a strut for wearing modest clothes, because you've got a curvier body, as have I. The fact you've actually categorized clothes as strutty or not shows the messaging has indeed seeped in, whether you're consciously aware of it or not. I've worn a hoodie and jeans to go get groceries, and I've had a gross guy come up to me and say oh nice I can't repeat that um as I'm just walking past trying to get my groceries it doesn't matter what you wear people are going to be disgusting anyway please stop this victim shaming mentality it's bad I am very much this meme okay <laughs> my mum in particular was very protective of me later I would learn it's because she had her own experiences of SA and she would sometimes encourage ideas from purity culture like modesty or strut shaming in an attempt to protect me from predatory men and I think that a lot of us can really relate to this right if we've been through something ourselves 
then we can project this stuff onto others and you see all of the dangers around you. It's really hard to unsee that. I've definitely been through that experience. But the thing is that what we're doing is actually putting this again on the victim and it's seen as a form of protection. That's where the place, it comes from a good place, but it's actually not a good thing overall. And it is really up to sadly the victim to actually have to go through the therapy and unpack this stuff and realize it doesn't matter what they could have done differently. They couldn't have done anything differently to prevent this from happening to them. And I'm really, really sorry for the people that have had this happen to them. It's it's too many of you to count honestly and it's one of the big reasons why I'm always saying like I really want mental health support to be far more accessible than it is I want it to be free honestly um but no I'm never gonna accept a sponsorship from better help okay <laughs> Don't worry, we're not leading into one of those. I've suffered as a view, but berating and shaming other women is not the way forward. It's something that I've struggled with myself, and I even talked about this in my objectification video, like, especially when it comes to trying to deconstruct the male gaze in my mind, because the way that men view us is so objectified, and it's not actually seeing us as a whole person, but we've also been raised to actually see this sort of, like, stuff as, like, beautiful. So it's, it's really hard trying to separate that. So instead of me just being like, oh, because I really was struggling with that whole concept in this video but it's like what two years old now but now I'm more like actually you know what screw it I want you to just wear whatever you want act however you want feel comfortable however you want because you know what <laughs> you're not asking for it no matter what um so yeah this is why again I'm always saying that we can all change learn and grow I'm still proud of that objectification video mind you but it is still something that um I've definitely had to struggle with in my mind because um I've dealt with a lot more predatory men in my life that I've actually realized I thought it was just a few but when I unpacked it more I was like Oh. Being honest and vulnerable with you, I had internalized grape culture to a massive degree, okay? I just thought that all of the stuff that I went through was completely normal. It's not normal, <laughs> okay? It's really not. And let, let's just talk about that in the next section, okay? I'm going to bring in another scientific study here. A specific consequence arises in association with strut shaming behaviors. Individuals who are exposed to strut shaming are also likely to be exposed to victim blaming, a process by which those who have experienced aggression and violence are seen as responsible for the violence committed against them. Several motivations for women who shame other women because of their sexual behavior exist. It can bring social benefits as well as increase self-esteem or bring down their competitors. Identification of three main types of negative impacts from slut shaming, isolation, victim blaming, and inhibition. While the first two consequences stem from actions enacted by the social circle, the third one regards individual behavior. The isolation process appears to be directly linked to the increased exposure to different forms of harassment. Moreover, once a person becomes the object of harassment, Harassment, they are less likely to find peer support. If the dilemma between protection and autonomy concerns themselves, young women choose self-determination without a doubt. But just as surely, if the dilemma concerns their beloved ones, they choose protection. Young adults find it difficult to understand how to deal with this issue because on one hand they think everyone should be free to express themselves and be able to act out of their own will, whilst on the other hand it's undeniable that, unfortunately, this freedom can expose the individual to objective risks given the nature of contemporary society. And once again, this is where I say, this is a society problem, not an individual problem. I'm just, I'm definitely past the point of just being like, oh, you need to protect yourself, you need to look after yourself. Dressing modestly or wearing baggy clothing is kind of like taking a toothpick to a sword fight, okay? And then you're blaming the person for the fact that their toothpick failed. Really? That's how I equate it in my mind. Ooh, I'm getting a bit heated. Maybe let's move on to the next section. Put the blame on me, boy. Put the blame on me. Pleasure is for men, but not for me. Not fully raised Catholic, but culturally Catholic. Feeling like sex is to satisfy men, not women. Women can't enjoy it. It takes away from them. Wanting sex is disgusting. Women are not sexual creatures. Women need to fear men because they will use them. Self-worth depends on sexual availability and attractive appearance, especially hot and skinny body and pleasing behavior. Now, I felt alone in this beforehand, but there were actually a number of people who felt the same way as me, where it's like, you need to do all the things to make sure that the man is happy, you know, men have needs and all of that other rubbish that, like, we get taught, which actually just promotes terrible behavior to happen. And we internalize all of this stuff, and then we're just like, yeah, but it doesn't really matter what I want or what I enjoy or whatever. I'd really internalize this too, and come on, let's be real, this is BS to just make us compliant. And let's face it, the less education that we have about our bodies and the less knowledge that we have about the boundaries that we're actually comfortable with, the more that people can take advantage of us and weaponize their ignorance. So many of you felt like you couldn't experience pleasure yourself 
ourselves because it's dirty, it's wrong, it's something that we can like joke about that men do, but oh, women, no. Who is any of this shame actually helping though? Because from what you were sharing, it made you scared and confused, more insular. You felt like you couldn't be yourself. You felt like you had to hide your sexuality. It took you longer to figure out your own sexual identity even. So you're only really starting to learn this stuff in your later 20s and even into your 30s. Isn't it interesting how all of these alpha bros want someone that's 19, huh? Hmm. All of this is what I mean about the importance of education and self-discovery, so that you can even like know where your own boundaries lie, know actually what you want, realize if you are asexual or not. Like, so you can actually figure yourself out as opposed to just feeling like you have to go along with it, even though it's something that you don't actually enjoy and don't want to do. The shame and everything is just not helping anyone lead a good life. And yes, this even means talking about this stuff with your friends, because then you can actually figure out, oh, what happened to me was actually incredibly wrong and screwed up um, because you don't know about all of these consent sort of issues, like the kind of gray areas as they get labeled as. And it's one of the reasons why um, I'll actually just shout out an Instagram page, um, La La Let Me Explain. I'll, I'll have it linked for you down below. It's a fantastic page to go and follow. Final thoughts at the end of this incredibly long video, which I've been filming for three and a half hours of. I bet you're begging for some solutions right now, right? Well, Overthrowing patriarchy is my main solution, but I don't have the kind of power for that, sadly. But what we can all do is let go of the ideals of purity culture, strut shaming, and victim blaming. This, just even I, if I can influence a couple of people here, that will actually help make a big difference because honestly, the ripple effects are huge. Another great thing that we can do is to raise children to not believe that their bodies are inherently bad. And also when it comes to boys in particular, not raise them to believe that they are entitled to other people's bodies and everything else in the world. Here's a radical thing, we can teach children that what each person does with their own body is up to their business, it's what they're comfortable with doing, so long as they're not hurting themselves or others, what's the problem? There's a program that one of you raised in a previous video of mine called Denim Day, and this had a really big impact on you. This is run by Peace Over Violence, and it debunks the idea of clothing being the cause of SA. It's called so because an 18 year old woman was wearing jeans, got and then the Italian Supreme Court said that she was wearing jeans, so she was asking for it, which we can all agree entirely incorrect. I've got this linked for you down below, so this is something that you could suggest to the school that your kids go to, or if you're a teacher at a school you could suggest this day, or even in your workplace, or post about it on social media. Um, Denim Day this year is the 24th of April, so I will make sure that I'm actually going to post about that, and I encourage you to do the same, and also make sure that people can actually see the information behind it. It's also got a whole bunch of really useful resources there. So um, that's one thing that we can all participate in. Another thing I think is really important to include in this video is that everyone is comfortable with different things, everyone has different boundaries, everyone has different like clothing that they even feel comfortable in. I mean like for example, I'm in a monogamous relationship, I'm married, and I'm very very happy living that life and that is the kind of relationship that I want. But I'm not going to go saying that everyone should have that same sort of relationship because everyone's like lives are different and honestly the world would be such a boring place if everyone was all the same. Seriously, it'd be so dull. This is one of my main issues with judgments around strut shaming in particular because people often project things onto women that they're asking for harassment. This happened in my office siren video and this made me so angry to see it because people were like, well why are they dressing like that if they're not asking for it? Why is it called an office siren unless like they've got bad intentions? And I'm like, goodness sake. Just let people express themselves in a way that they're comfortable with. Oh my gosh, someone's having fun with fashion. Someone's having fun with makeup. Someone wants to wear baggy clothes. Okay, that's fine. So long as you're not hurting yourself or others, what is the actual harm? This is what I mean about like the importance of unpacking all of this strut shaming and victim blaming mentality is actually just hurting so many of us. And it's even preventing friendships from being able to happen too. And you know what? It perpetuates violence because if you deem someone to be wearing strutty clothing and then they go through something you're going to label them as asking for it you are leaving someone out there in the cold and this actually happened a number of times in the survey as well and you said like how that broke your heart how people have been through this horrible stuff and they were just left like they were ostracized and we need to stop that like it's not the victim's fault if there's just one thing that you take from this what someone is wearing is never an invitation to grape okay like i just 
I really need people to understand that. We've internalized so much strut shaming messaging that we do it without thinking. We're literally objectifying people who are just existing and treating them as separate from their own personhood, projecting our gross ideas onto them and then calling them bad women. And I think you'll find where the common denominator lies, patriarchy. It hurts every gender. I've said it before, I'm gonna keep saying it. And the thing is that we can unlearn its lessons and instead uplift and empower each other to actually rise up against it. The fact that I'm still having to make this video now in the year 2024, even though this is something which has been talked about for decades at this point, does really frustrate me. And it shows how hard it is for people to let go of this stuff. But like I said, there are a number of people who have never called someone else a strut. There are a number of you who have been raised in households that don't believe this sort of stuff. There are a number of people who are raised in more quote unquote progressive ways where you're not looking down on people because of their perceived sexuality or something. And I love that. I want more of that. So there's definitely like a whole bunch of like little beams of sunshine that I'm seeing around the place. And I also want to make it clear here that I'm not actually slamming religion when it comes to this video because there is a lot of religious that a number of you have dealt with, but there were also a number of you who were raised religious, you went to Catholic school or you had Catholic parents or like all different religions basically, but they didn't raise you with shaming ideology. You didn't get all of this horrible messaging that your body is bad, that your body is sinful. So I'm not actually saying that all religion's bad because please do not misinterpret me. That's not what I'm saying here at all. And all of this is why I like to talk about the taboo and to realize that someone's worth is not dictated by who they have or have not slept with. I really want to reinforce the message that your body is not shameful and wanting pleasure is not shameful either. Honestly, I think that unlearning this shame is one of the most radical things that we can do. I mean, it would be even more radical if we could ban the concept of virginity to begin with, but I don't think the world is quite ready for that conversation yet. You know when I talk about important topics like this, like this video right here, same dress, I know. <laughs> um, YouTube really likes to demonetize me and shadow ban me, um, and it's one of the really big reasons why I was so happy when Belessa wanted to sponsor this video, because it really does make a huge Huge difference along with you actually watching and commenting and sharing this video if you did make it all the way to the end of this very long video please leave the nail painting emoji or the lipstick emoji or the high heel emoji because I think that any gender should be able to enjoy those things regardless of any strut shaming messaging regardless of any gender norm it's just a little bit of celebration maybe chuck a sunshine emoji in there as well if you also are trying to hold on to some hope that things will get better in the future and don't forget to check out that giveaway link in the pinned comment or description box down below from Belasa because uh, you definitely want to try out some of these toys. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I hope that you love this. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Maybe go watch something nice and happy and distracting afterwards. Um, my recommendations would be things from Julian 2, Rachel Maxi, um, Prickly Alpaca or like Nerdforge. Those are like some of the channels that I go to when I really need to just like not with the world. So I will have all of those linked for you down below as well. Um, all amazing people. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you again in a couple of weeks for the next video. Bye lovelies.